people living in the United States, the wealthiest country on earth, are unhappy with their material conditions. We have more than enough resources to make everyone entirely comfortable, but under our current economic system, many people's most basic needs are not met. If the purpose of the economy is to manage resources and organize labor to meet our material wants and needs, the economy is not realizing its purpose. It is failing. What is going so terribly wrong? Let's analyze a basic example of production. Let's say we have a company, they produce something, we will call it widgets. We have some made up currency that only has value because you and I agree it does right now. It's called US dollars. I'm just kidding, we'll call it coins. You have a widget shop owner and a worker. The worker is paid a wage of 10 coins an hour. And they're pretty good. They make about 20 widgets every hour or 140 widgets in a day. Widgets are sold for six coins each. Subtract raw materials and operating costs for a profit of about five coins per widget. In a day, the worker is paid 80 coins. They make 140 widgets with their own two hands. And then the owner sells these widgets and after labor costs, makes 620 coins in a day. To make that money, what work did the owner do? None. And what is the definition of getting things for free? Doing no work yourself to earn them. This is how corporations make profits, paying workers less per hour than their labor is worth. To be productive, we need things. We need resources, tools, machinery, land, the means of production. A small group of people own almost all of the means of production. The rest of us who do not have them do not have the ability to be productive on our own accord. To do so, we must sell our labor. It has become normalized for a company to purchase a person for a given amount of time, control what they do in that time and how they present themselves, and take ownership of everything they make while they're working. But we have to participate in this system because we need to earn money in order to purchase the basic necessities. And when we spend our money on rent, water, and food, the money's just going right back to the owners of corporations. In our economy, the working class must do labor for someone else to profit off of in order to survive. This is called wage slavery. In our economy, we do not work together. We work for those who own the means of production. We can observe this on a macro level. Gross domestic products, the total dollar value of goods and services we produce as a country in one year increased steadily over the past 50 years. Yet, our wages are decreasing and have been for the past 50 years. So workers are extremely productive but are not receiving the money made off of their productivity, so where is it going? Over the past 50 years, profit margins for corporation owners increased substantially. People work more and more, produce more and more, and make less and less while owners of corporations make more profit and use this money to get even wealthier. Quite perplexingly, this all does not mean that our economic system is broken. It is, in fact, functioning as intended. The definition of capitalism is 
an economic and political system in which trade and industry are controlled by private owners for profit. Think about what this system has led to. 15 million households do not have enough food to eat, yet 30 to 40 percent of our food supply is wasted annually. Perfectly good food just thrown away because people couldn't pay money to buy it. There are 553,000 homeless people, yet luxury rental properties accounted for 87 percent of apartment construction in 2018. To be productive, we need to produce things. But what is profitable is not always what we need and want. Do we make new medicines to cure diseases and produce enough for everyone who needs them? Or do pharmaceutical companies patent drugs to hike the prices and profit off of someone's desperate need to buy them in order to live? What fueled imperialism and colonization? Does our government violently intervene in societies abroad to fight for justice or to secure more markets and resources? And who controls our government, military, and intelligence when we wage these wars? The American people or a small group of elites who profit off of US military intervention? And who pays the trillions of dollars in taxes to fund these wars? The profiteers or the workers back home? Who gives their lives in these wars? The people who start them or innocent young people who see joining the military as a more viable option than working a minimum wage job back home? Do we use our resources sustainably or are we destroying the environment and depending on infinite economic growth despite living in a finite ecosystem? Think about the nature of the work people do all day. Is it meaningful or are most people on the clock for set hours making money for someone else? This system cannot persist without catastrophic consequences. In the early to mid-1900s, poor people, working people, rose up in the masses, waging violent wars against the wealthy owners, the ruling class. But these wars only happened in a few places around the world. Evidence suggests that if present trends continue, war is the likely outcome. Oppressed people will fight for freedom. What if, instead of allowing private owners to control our resources and use our workers to make profits, we organize our economic system democratically? We agree that the primary purpose of the economy should be to meet our material wants and needs. We all have a say in how the resources are managed. We organize labor so that workers can elect their leaders and own the means of production. We utilize excess resources and excess labor power for innovation. We will not have liberty and justice until we have economic rights. Americans love liberty and justice until it is called socialism. The ideas that I just described are socialist. Socialism has been put in a box with the label bad on it so that people won't bother to look inside. But I looked inside that box and I found that the problem is not that people fundamentally disagree with socialist principles. The problem is that people have been taught to hate a word without ever defining it. You might notice that nothing I've said sounds like anything you've heard about socialism. It does not refer to centralized authoritarian control. 
We have been given many misleading narratives about socialism from the wealthy owners of corporations and media companies who have a lot to lose when we discover a more viable alternative economic system. We spend the majority of our waking hours working. In a democracy, we insist we have an inherent right to have a say over the choices that affect our daily lives. Democratic socialism insists we apply those democratic principles to our economic system for an economy run by and for the people. Inevitably, we wonder how this sort of system will manifest. Let's think about energy. We need energy in the form of electricity to do just about anything these days. Let's focus on fossil fuels, which we burn to make electricity. I can imagine no reason why one person nor small group of people deserves to own an entire oil deposit or mineral deposit. No one today was around 300 or 150 million years ago when organic materials settled to the bottom of lakes and oceans and through heat and pressure formed oil. No one did the work to make that oil. No one does work to make coal in a coal mine. All human beings were born on this planet as equals. No one person should own an entire natural resource and be able to personally profit off of extracting it. We can, instead, demand a vote to take public ownership of our resources. We can make electricity affordable and nationalize the energy grid. We can allocate economic gains to fund public infrastructure development. We can agree to transition to 100% renewable energy and apply these same concepts to solar, wind, or geothermal. On the front of labor, we can have 100% worker-owned businesses. And for more mobile workers, we can develop collective bargaining systems that determine hours, benefits, and set wages across entire sectors, not just employer by employer. This will ensure our people are paid a fair wage that compensates them for the work that they do. We can take back the freedom to work reasonable hours and spend more time doing what we enjoy. We can work so that we only need one job. People can choose a job they like, not just the job that they can get to make ends meet. We can have a universal single-payer health care system that will one day be seen as fundamental as our public education system. We can make broadband available for everyone in a similar way to how we once worked to make roads and highways a public good. The internet has given us unprecedented access to information and capacity to communicate. We can make it more profitable for the few by making it more exclusive, but everyone can benefit from making it accessible. Human progress does not happen when we creatively make more advanced luxuries to be enjoyed by the people at the top. Human progress happens when we raise the bottom line. We can allocate capital towards what is most valuable for humanity. Instead of allowing private owners to allocate all of our resources towards what will yield the highest return in dollars for them. We can organize our labor and resources however we want to. But we are told the tale that the economy is an autonomous entity. It regulates and controls itself. This is simply not true. The economic system is comprised of human actors making decisions. Economic systems are not something we can see, touch, or feel. They exist only in our minds. The economic system is comprised of many individuals thinking a certain way about the economy and acting accordingly. So then, how do we change our economic system? We have a new and better idea about what the purpose of our economy should be. 
We behave differently, redefine the norms, rewrite laws, make new policies, and make the change. Human beings have the capacity to act as a collective. We have yet to devise structures for economic decision-making that is democratic. It is time to devote ourselves to a new direction for the U.S. economy and adopt a better economic system. We can wait until our society destabilizes, or we can band together for a political revolution that revitalizes. I prefer revolution. <laughs>